Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is our day two of the BOND program. Embrace the science of friendship and inclusiveness. Welcome again. Welcome to those who couldn't make it yesterday. Thanks also to the participants for their activities in the WhatsApp group and continue to ask questions. I want to have a real special grateful thank you to um, uh, Vidya. So Vidya um, Ramachandran, who uh, gave us in the WhatsApp uh, a good summary of the key point of yesterday. So, um, you know, kudos to you, Vidya, and I see you on video. So it's uh, amazing to have you part of this group and to bring all your attention, concentration, and you are just demonstrating the science of friendship. How can I help? How can I connect with everybody else? Uh, so you are a wonderful friend already, and I want to uh, thank you for that. Um, if you want to say a few words, just uh, feel free to uh, open and mute and just uh, tell us where you are, who you are, and uh, so people will know when they are receiving your summaries, where it comes from. So just, Vidya, you can say if you are just unmute yourself. If you know how to do that. I estimate in ah, You are again on mute. We could hear you only one second. Yes. Thanks a lot, ma'am. So it's my pleasure that I'm able to hear your talks and be able to make some synapses. I thought it will be helpful to all people and also I will also get a clarity by rewriting it. That's also my thing. Basically, I am Vidya. I have done my PhD in sociology. I live in Hyderabad. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. So Thank nice to so talk much. with you. I am very happy and fortunate to be with a friend to you. Yes. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Uh, yeah. I you. love the fact I can see you and meet you. And, yeah, yeah uh, soon, soon. Yeah, I am hoping to meet you. <laughs> Probably in the well, Pyramid Valley. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I, I, miss, I miss so much India. And I went to Hyderabad also to see the pyramid, you know, a few times. Okay. So, okay. So yes, uh, expecting to see you soon. Okay, sure. And Thank listen you so to much. it in person. Listen your talks in person. Okay. Thank All you. right. Thank you, Vidya. Thank so you, uh, I encourage everybody to read the summary and after the session today, I saw some requests. I will post, you know, two or three books on mindfulness. Of course, we have a lot of books on meditation, but uh, I will focus on uh, two very simple books on mindfulness uh, so you can, uh, you can understand what we are talking about. But net-net is train your brain, train yourself to be present to yourself and to, uh, to the rest of the world, you know, in the present moment. So don't let your mind go uh, in the past or in the future, wandering, and you don't really know if you are there or not. But it's really about paying attention to the people we are with, to our own emotion, to the food we are eating, to the cooking we are doing, to the uh, writing we are doing, and be there and not multitasking. That's the way we can live our life. Life is now. It's not yesterday or tomorrow. It's really now. So it's really training our brain, uh, our body, our own feelings and emotion to be in the present moment on purpose with no judgment. So there is no negative talk about, you know, you know, judging what you are doing, good or right or wrong or whatever. You're just observing. And as you do that, it's really transforming the life, giving some peace, but also a, a lot of additional benefits uh, you know, especially, for instance, in a relationship, because when you talk to someone and you are practicing mindfulness, you really are with this person. And the best give we can we can make, the best gift we can make to anybody, is to give them our full, full attention. Being a family member, being our children, being our students, our colleagues, our clients, our friends but also with ourselves. So yesterday we talked about 
the first step to uh, friendship and inclusiveness is to learn to care and love ourselves, to give us some freedom and time to invest in ourselves, to not see always the negative as our brain is wired to first notice what is wrong and what is negative, but give the space for all the good things we are doing. Acknowledge them and celebrate them. So today we are going to talk about friendship with others and an introduction also to friendship with everyone, which is the, the key topic around inclusiveness. So let me share some material to help in the flow. So friendship with others first. And we certainly all have great, great memories, you know, related to our friendship. People who have been with us since a long time, people who are helping us, people we have not seen for two years that we can call any time. to reconnect or to share the pain or the joy. So friendship with others is recognized as a critical aspect of health, mental health, longevity, and happiness. And we have to cultivate that. It's a lot of work. Friendship with others, you know, others can be friends, but can also be family members, can be your own spouse or partner. It, it, it is, of course, enjoyable, but it takes some work to, uh, to, to make it bloom and fulfill, you know, both of us in this relationship. So the key here to remember is that, you know, it is something we should all invest in, is friendship, cultivating the friendship. And what does mean, you know, friendship? There are many, many definitions about it. But we all have, you know, some people, and usually very few, who are intimate with us. The people, you know, that know ourselves, that we have been telling everything to. The good, the bad, the ugly. They understand what we have been going through, where we are. We are ready to share, you know, when we have doubt or questions. We are ready to share also, you know, all the good things when we fell in love or anything. We, we got a great news and so on. But the key is that they, the, a real friend must accept who we have become because we might also not be the same than 10 years ago. And they will push us gently to grow. You know, on my side, you know, cl clearly, as I am a co-founder of this Buddha CEO, Chandra and Vani have been amazing friends for me. I know them only since five years, but they have transformed my life, obviously. They have been so generous in, you know, coaching, helping. And I remember very well that at some point, for instance, to Chandra, I told him, hey, continue to push me. Continue to push me ahead. Challenge me. Help me continue to grow. Don't let me go back in a lazy, I don't have the time to do this. So that's the type of friends we are all looking for. But if we are looking for these friends, we also have to embrace these words to be also a good friend for somebody else. It means passions, understanding, empathy, giving time and attention, being in full awareness of this relationship, being present, not listening from one ear to what the friend has to say. And when I say friend, can be anybody close to us. But, you know, rest of the brain is focused on, hey, what I'm going to do tomorrow. So being present, being in full attention is the best gift we can give to anyone. Having Develop empathy, putting ourselves in the shoes of somebody else, and sometimes just sitting near somebody, being there, ready to help, or ready to stay silent is critical. So we have to apply this 
to who we are with people around us. We talked yesterday about emotional intelligence. And as somebody was you know, chatting, clearly you have, we can measure that because I told you it's a skill that can be developed. It's a skill that will help us in our private life and in a workplace. And in a workplace, you know, many CEOs, many very well-known, you know, senior executive, and the same was in IBM. You know, the emotional quotient was as critical as the, you know, intelligence quotient. This is the way you can adapt. This is the way you can manage yourself in the most difficult situation under pressure. This is the way we can collaborate better. This is the way we can show some enthusiasm understand what others are trying to tell us, including clients or partners or colleagues. This is the way for a leader to be able to understand what type of style this leader needs to adopt depending on the situation. There are situations at work where we need to be a democratic leader, listen to everybody's opinion or proposal, and then make a decision or even vote. But sometimes it's not that time. Sometimes there might be a big outage somewhere, a big problem, an urgent issue. And as a leader, then you are not democratic anymore. You can feel that what people are expecting from us is to make a fast decision, to demonstrate some authority. So emotional intelligence is helping also to adapt Ourself, understand our emotion. I am frightened, uh, or I am, you know, at peace, uh, or I am um, anxious or concerned. I manage this, and I can also manage the situation vis-à-vis -vis what the emotion around is. You are not going to talk to a client who is, uh, you know, super stressed the same way that a client who look okay, ready to engage a conversation. So. All of this comes and it can help really develop the best collaboration, even in multicultural environment. It's also helping, you know, diffusing the conflict between people because we can feel better, you know, the stakes between these two um, inside a group and being able to, uh, you know, quiet down or, you know, talk, you know, explicitly about it, managing the emotions around and get to uh, more results. And of course, at the end of the day, it's improving the overall job satisfaction. So there are books to read. If you, if you type Daniel Coleman, uh, you know, on Google, you will find a lot of books. They are translated in so many languages. And that's the basics of emotional intelligence, especially for the workplace. So that's critical to have this when you want to go further and develop the skill of friendship with others as well as inclusiveness. So we can develop powerful friendship. And again, here is some work, some things to be learned that should become part of our routine, the way we respond. And the idea here is to change our subconscious mind, our belief that is in the subconscious mind, so the 90% of our subconscious mind, you know, this belief or attitude that we have that might be a barrier or a limiting, you know, barrier to us to develop more friendship. So it's all about, for instance, accepting the others just the way they are. Okay, my colleague sitting near me doesn't have the same background. They don't see the uh, situation the same way I do. They don't have in mind the same solution that I would propose. I'm not judging. With mindfulness, I pay attention and I welcome this different way of thinking because maybe it's going to make me think about something else and that's how you build you know, uh, creatively new ideas, new solution, innovation. It's about encouraging people to grow. So being a parent, being a friend, you know, being a teacher, 
you know, being of course a colleague or a manager, it's always putting your attention and your energy to help people to grow, encouraging them to start new things, to learn new things, giving feedback, positive or negative feedback, genuine feedback with the intent to help somebody grow. So being direct, being frank, being open, but always pushing to grow. And of course, role model that because if you don't do anything yourself, you know, and you st stay in front of the TV for hours, how can you encourage, you know, a kid, you know, to do something else? You know, we, we cannot be, you know, with this gap of, okay, I, I, I spend my time in front of the TV, but I, I try to teach my kids that they should learn a lot of things. So we, we can start by ourselves. And that's part of the loving ourselves. So it's about trusting and coaching people and trying to identify things that can help them grow. So being concrete in the action. If, of course, it's, you know, being clear, you know, at work, being clear about the objective, about what's working or not working. Explain the purpose of things. Being open to new ideas. So you might have, you know, uh, a room with a lot of uh, people who have been, for instance, in a team or in a business for 10 years, and there is a new, you know, young uh, employee. This person might have a different opinion, but uh, will be shy and maybe try to not disrupt the fact that everybody has embraced an ID. But actually, we should encourage these people, these young people to, to, to talk, to speak up. Because maybe they have seen something that the group has not, because we are so used to these operations and so on. We are in our routine. So emotional intelligence, by the way, is helping that. Identify, you know, when someone is silent and make sure to uh, help how to open up and speak up. Care, don't cure. I, I love this, uh, these words. You know, being a friend is to care about somebody. Is not to try always to cure everything. You know, we have some always some good stories. Um, you know, difference between the man and the woman. The woman and I was part of it. When I was coming from the office after a difficult day, you know, I would be in a kitchen with my husband, and I would have to tell this or this story. But I didn't expect him to give me the solution. I was expect me, him to. Listen carefully to care about what I had to say or you know, feel the, maybe the stress I had. And then maybe offer one or two questions to help me go further and move on. You know, not trying like a lot of men are trying to do, <laughs> you know, giving me the solution right away. Oh, you should do this. No, no, it doesn't work. You don't understand what I'm trying to say. No, I'm telling you, you should do this. Okay, and it's an ongoing, you know, discussion. And at the end, the woman leaves. <laughs> she go back in her room. So care, don't cure always. It's about listening sometimes, and it's empathy. It's accepting the discomfort. Again, it's being comfortable with the discomfort of being with new people. So when you practice meditation and mindfulness, you actually accept this discomfort. You recognize Oh, I don't feel comfortable with this person. You know, it's different than us. Um, mm, comes from another company. You know, I, I don't, I don't feel good. I don't understand really what this person is telling me. No, it's you know, I am okay with somebody who has a very different opinion. I consider this as a richness, and I'm, of course, you know, I'm talking about normal situation if somebody is. I'm not talking about situation where somebody is aggressing us or aggressing, you know, obvious values and so on. I'm just talking about this, you know, difference of position or opinion or background from multicultural environment, for instance. And of course, always appreciate and celebrate, you know, anything you can celebrate with a friend. And with a friend, again, it's a very broad definition as we establish friendship. You know, we are here on planet Earth 
to experience a great life. And laughing and smiling and having fun and celebrating is one of the joy of life. You know, I remember in a, I was in India with a, with a colleague and we were, you know, going to um, a client and we were in a taxi. And this uh, colleague was a great one, by the way, an Indian colleague. He told me that, uh, you know, he was uh, making a, a sacrifice by uh, bringing his uh, daughter to school every day. He was taking time and so on. And, you know, I, I looked at him and said, why are you talking about sacrifice? You know, just take a step back. Think about the fact that you have the, the joy and uh, the advantage to uh, be with your daughter every morning, have some quality time with her, discussion, listening to music, when so many, uh, you know, parents would love to have that. So just smile. It's okay. You can enjoy this. You don't have to look like it's a sacrifice because you cannot be at work, you know, uh, 20 minutes earlier. Just enjoy it, because life is going fast. And finally, a friend may be waiting, yes, behind a stranger face. Maya Angelou is a very famous poet, and she, um, she's fighting for civil rights. She's an activist. And um, this, she wrote that in, uh, you know, a, a document called Letter to My Daughter. Yes. You know, I could meet a lot of people in India because I learned, you know, that, you know, anybody can become a friend. And I practice that every day and engage conversation, small talk at the beginning with people I am with. And that's how you start to meet a lot of people and get to know their story. And by the way, get the opportunity to talk about mindfulness. But I met so many people in the last five years, much more than, you know, in the previous 20 years. So never forget that behind anybody around you, you might find a friend. And that's my own story. You know, Chandra was the CEO of a company I wanted to acquire. It was a business relationship. But then, you know, this was actually the best friend I could, I could have. So going further, you know, journey to inclusiveness. Inclusiveness you will see it's, it's, a, it's a journey. So let's go. Why are we all talking in a workplace, but more and more in communities and groups about inclusiveness? You know, welcoming any type of individu individual. So diversity is, you know, of course, is what differentiates group of people, you know, from one another. You, know, you are diverse from somebody else because I am from France and U.S., and some people here from India, for instance, or I am a woman and some people are, you know, men, or I am older and some people are younger. So you, you get the, the point. The world is made of diverse people. And diversity is about, you know, regrouping the people who are kind of similar and making sure there is, you know, a good representation of all these individuals or all these groups. Then we move to inclusiveness. Inclusiveness is more activist, is more engaged. It's all the behaviors and the norms, social norms, that make sure that everybody, no matter what they are coming from, who they are, how diverse they are, they are welcome the way they are. You know, they are treated fairly, they are respectfully treated, and more of that, they are encouraged to contribute fully, to sit at the table and to contribute fully. So that's very key. And that's the difference is from organizing a team that has diverse people to making sure everybody, no matter who they are, are going to be equally encouraged to contribute, to participate, and of course, making sure of their you know, um, well-being. So why, why so much focus again on diversity or inclusiveness? Well, we are all human beings. And as human beings, and that's psychology and you know, medical science, everybody telling you, we have a deep need of being wanted and being loved. And because of that, we have a deep desire from the very beginning of our life to create interpersonal connection. 
to create relationship and again from this relationship to feel loved and wanted by families by social groups by communities so these are very key needs for our mental health and our well-being and that leads to life and job satisfaction we even say that you know when we have a beautiful sense of belonging, our mental and physical health, our immune system, and even our longevity is improved, is increased. And that's part of the, you probably heard about this Ikigai book that Chandra is presenting in a six weeks program. This longevity proven by uh, the Okinawa population and explaining how they keep having a very intense social life and they live more than 100 years in good health. So this journey has a sense. is not for the sake of being inclusive. It's to make sure that everyone has this sense of satisfaction, this well-being, this happiness, and of course, this health. So diversity, again, something that we all need to know. It's you know, making sure you have a good representation uh, of the population in the organization. Okay, so same in a company. And I was doing that yesterday because I got a, a, a proposal for a job. And the first thing I did was to go on a website and look, you know, at um, the executive team, the leadership team. And, you know, it was all, you know, white male in their 50s. And it didn't make me feel like, oh, I want to join this company. Okay, so representation is key. Engagement, when you have, you know, a good diversity in a group, in a team, you know, you feel more, of course, uh, engaged. Uh, you feel like um, there is a balanced representation. It makes you feel secure and good and enthusiastic. And finally, diversity is providing uh, a different way of thinking so different perspective and and background and way to address solutions so increasing the uh, creativity and sense of innovation so that's key and we need all of us to be actively you know advocating diversity in any organization you know being um, a non-profit being a profit being governmental public being uh, you know um, academic always always promote the diversity and it's not only women or men it's not only the location where we come from but it's language accent uh, the way people have clothes you know are they playing music at night uh, you know are they singing uh, do they love mathematics is any type and moving to inclusiveness this is the key this is where we really see if the group of if ourselves we are in this inclusive net, inclusive net mindset and i will tell just a short story to illustrate that you know one day it was a long time ago it was in france and um you know we had a a, a business meeting that was uh, you know created by somebody else and i was invited and i was already a manager at that time i arrived in the room and it was only men okay i was the only woman so we sit there we talk about the topic it was a serious urgent topic you know and um it took more time because there was different opinions and so on and at some point you know somebody started to knock at the door because we had you know somebody had obviously booked the meeting room but we were over time so somebody went to see and uh, then behind the door, there was another group waiting for the meeting room. Then I can tell you, it was just amazing. Suddenly, everybody turned to me, the only woman, to say, hey, Laurence, why you didn't book more time for this room? And we're like, why are you talking to me? It's because I'm the only woman? I, I don't even know who did book this room. I was invited. But you see... In that moment, I had zero feeling of inclusiveness. Suddenly, all the meetings we just had where I was really engaged, you know, was 
becoming nothing to me. And I look with a different look actually at my colleagues. I was just amazed. And that's what, you know, awakened to me this passion for diversity and inclusiveness. And as I was doing a lot of roundtable in many, many parts of the world, it could be in Japan, of course, in India, but in Latin America also, in Peru or Colombia, many countries, I was always getting these same remarks. So at that time, it shocked me, but I know we can work on it, and that's why we are here today. Um, and one of the key on inclusiveness is this neutralization of our unconscious bias. And tomorrow we will talk only about unconscious bias. But in the story I just told, my colleagues, they really enjoy being with me. They were sharing amazing you know, project with me. We were as a team for about an hour. But suddenly, for one minute, their unconscious bias came up all at the same time. There is a woman in the room, obviously. She's the one who should have booked the room. Okay? It happened the same way, same thing I remember about, you know, getting some coffee. It was I was younger than that. But at the time, I was too probably not mature enough to understand what was going on. But everybody suddenly said, hey, Laurence, can you get some coffee? And I was already, again, uh, you know, a, a manager. So, you know, it, it tells you that with people who are smart, well-intended, with uh, colleagues I knew who were open-minded, and obviously their conscious value was about diversity, was about, you know, making sure there would be a good representation of, of women and so on. But just for one second, their subconscious mind their unconscious bias came up. So they reacted with it, but it was funny because there was probably six or seven of them at the same time. So you can see how powerful subconscious bias can be and can actually drive you to say or to behave in a way that is even against your own conscious value. So this story is true and when I saw on stage uh, a professor for, from NYU, New York University, talking to our annual meeting to 300 senior executives, including the chairman of IBM, it was a revelation for probably 90% of the people in the room who all felt well-intended, open-minded for equality and all of this, but suddenly realized that maybe they were not always having the right reaction and they should manage that better or the right tone, and so on. So we will talk about that tomorrow. And now we're going to move and digest all of this into our you know, meditation. It's going to be about 25 minutes meditation. And for those of you who are new to the meditation, again, you're going to sit comfortably on a chair, on the floor, with back support if you need, on a sofa. If you can... Of course, you cross your hands and fingers into fingers to create this circuit of energy inside ourselves. Take your glass off if you have glasses. If it's comfortable for you, you can also cross the legs at the ankle. Same reason, we create this circle of energy. You're going to close your eyes and just focus for the entire duration on your normal, peaceful and tender breath. We will start with a short body scan to just help us and, you know, feeling our heart also to try to align our mind, heart and body helped by our breath. And you will just focus on the breath. If you have thoughts coming in, don't worry. It's not a competition. There is no goal to achieve here. Every meditation is good. You just notice a thought, be aware of it again. We train our awareness. Move them gently and bring back your attention to the breath. Again, you're going to do that a million times. But I can promise you, when you do that a million times in your daily life, that's how you build your mindfulness. Because you're going to train your brain to come back to the present moment. The breath is your present moment, is your present life, every in or out breath. So that's how you build your mindfulness. So let's 
start right now. I will launch some music. Right away. Close your eyes. Put your attention first to your breath, to feel the breath. And now tell your mind to focus on your feet, grounded on the floor. Visualize them, feel them, the toes, the heels. And you can be thankful as they carry you all day long. Then move your attention to your knees, to your leg, the right leg, the left leg. Try to relax both of them. Feel your weight on the chair on the floor, billions of cells working for you, 24 by 7. Then go slowly up your spine, visualize now your low back. And go up slowly through your shoulders. Shoulders are often very tense. So let go your shoulders once, twice. You could feel like a mountain, peaceful and relaxed. Now focus on your face. 40 muscles on your face. Try to relax the eyeballs, the forehead, the cheeks. Relax the jaw and the tongue in the mouth. Finally, make sure your hands are comfortably relaxed on your lap. And now, try to feel your heart beating in your chest. Go inside, listen inside. Your heart is the seed of all emotions, the seed of life, compassion and care and joy.
Breathe in concert with your heart. And again, you can send plenty of love and gratitude to your body. Now, dear friends, let's move into our breath mindfulness meditation. Just be with your natural breath. Your breath is your best friend, your unconditional loving friend, always with you, wherever you are, days and nights, just be with the breath. If it helps, you can focus on the tip of your nose, feeling the air coming in, a bit warm, cooler, and coming out a bit warmer. At this stage, the only thing moving inside you is the flow of the air coming in and out of your nostrils. If thoughts are distracting you, that's normal. No worry, no judgment. Just move them out gently and bring back your attention to your breath. And do this again and again and again. Be with your breath, dear friends. And for once, allow yourself to forgive and forget everything about yourself. And to forget everything about your life.
Allow yourself to just be the observer, the witness of your breath. Slowly become one with your breath. And allow yourself to slowly and slowly become lighter and lighter with your in-breath and out-breath. It is natural to have thoughts. Just notice. Let them go gently. And bring back your attention to your breath.
as you become one with your breath. Allow yourself to go beyond your body, to go deeper and deeper into this emptiness that you start feeling inside yourself. This emptiness that seems to be all around you. An emptiness where there is nobody, where there is no place and no time. Emptiness is energy. We are part of this quantum field of energy, a field of infinite possibilities, where we are all connected with each other, with everything, and everybody else. Just be with your brain. Allow yourself to go deeper and deeper into this feeling of emptiness and tune in with the abundance of energy inside you and all around you. Our universe is limitless. The energy is limitless.
You are limitless. Just be with your breath. And now, dear friends, keep your eyes closed, stay on your breath, and pick up one person you want to be grateful for today. It can be a friend, a family member, a stranger, a colleague, a shopkeeper, anyone. The first one that comes to your mind and build gratitude inside your entire body, inside your billions of cells, inside your heart and mind. Gratitude is the higher state of receivership, a wonderful emotion building positive energy. You can smile and let this deep feeling of gratitude fill you up. Let's take one minute to let the energy and this beautiful feeling of gratitude settle into our mind, heart and body. Breathe. Smile. Feel. The world is yours. There is no limit. And whenever you are ready, you can gently and slowly put your hands on your eyes A slow, gentle coming back. And we can count five, four, three, two, one. Welcome back. Welcome back, everyone. I hope you enjoy the meditation. Billions of cells happily dancing inside your body. 
after you took the time to care about yourself and love yourself and invest in yourself through this learning. I will stay, it's officially the end of this session, but I will stay a few more minutes if there are any, anyone wanted to share or to ask a, a question. Tomorrow we will have uh, one more session and we will deep dive into these unconscious biases, learning more what they are, how can we mitigate them, how can we recognize them. And for many people I know, including myself, it was really part of a life-changing awareness. So I hope I will see you all again tomorrow. Any question tonight? I see Vilma. You can unmute yourself. Can you put your camera on so we can see you? Hi, Vilma. Hi, hi, Lawrence. Hello. Hi. Um, it was a very nice experience, meditative experience, very peaceful uh, from the moment you asked, uh, started with the calming of each body part, relaxing of each body part. So it was wonderful. Um, and especially towards the end when you said, um, think of one person, whoever it is, to whom you can express gratitude. So I actually imagine myself um, um, falling at the feet of one of um, my friends uh, in um, in a gesture of gratitude. So that was very uh, that was a really humbling experience, and it was um, it was really nice. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vilma, for sharing. Where are you from? I'm from Mumbai uh, in uh, India, yeah. Okay. And um, I guess you are following the other programs of Buddha CEO, or is it your first time? No, no, no. I have been following uh, those 40-day programs by okay. Chandra, sir. Yeah, oh, and um, yeah, I have found it very, very useful. <laughs> okay. Okay, great. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. Um, I know that usually the end of this meditation about, you know, gratitude and focusing on one person is always a lot of chill for me. It's, uh, yeah. it's, it's very beautiful. Yes. And sometimes you are surprised by uh, what comes up to your mind first. Right, uh, right. It can, it can be anybody. Absolutely. Thank you, so yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Anybody else wants to share or has any question? Okay, so again, for those who are still there, this uh, learning is something that we can reuse around, you know, ourselves. You know, wherever we, uh, we live, community we are active in, or the workplace, or of course the family. And it's even more needed uh, in these special years um, to understand, you know, what everybody is going through. So thanks again for today and uh, I'm super happy to see you again tomorrow for the last day of this program. Thank you so much. And I will ask my uh, friend Shiva Pradeep to launch some music. So to say bye-bye, take care and see you tomorrow.
you for the gift of friends who know everywhere I've been and love me back home again. Thank you. Freedom of my-